All right, thank you. I'm extremely delighted to talk about the future of high-tech business models. Actually, to manage your expectations a little bit, and to be honest that I don't have a crystal ball to look into the future, the original title was Reflections on the Future of High-Tech Business Models. So I hope that nobody is disappointed if I don't show you the one and only tool that you can apply um, to create your high-tech business models. I think we live in times where it's sometimes worthwhile to go beyond tools and to reflect a little bit on the broader context. And that's what I try to do. I hope this gives you some uh, food for thought for the break afterwards. And if I manage to uh, make one, two, three people discuss about the topic, then I'm already really happy. Um, there's 45 seconds of advertisement. So I'm Florian, director of the Center of Entrepreneurship at Technical University Berlin. And what we mainly do is we scout high-tech innovation, high-tech technologies. We scout and try to find fantastic people who want to bring their innovation to market. And that's exactly what we do in a very structured incubation process, which is adapted to the individual needs of um, startup teams. What is important, what we observe at Technical University Berlin, what I observed in my former jobs, is that there is something like a traditional uh, approach to go from high-tech, from your idea, to the market. And this traditional idea goes as follows. Well, I'm perhaps a researcher in a university or I'm somebody working in a company, and there is a certain problem that I identify. Sometimes it's historically a problem in research. Uh, sometimes it kind of falls from sky and very seldom there's a very special client need, and I start working on a high-tech solution for five to ten years. Um, at a certain point, I have my innovation, uh, I have my patent or something that I can bring to the market. And only then, after five to ten years of work, my business model canvas, uh, my business model development, or whatever you use as a kind of tool, starts. So people come to us, I have the solution. And then we say, OK, right, uh, now we have to find a service or product. We have to define a unique selling proposition. And then we want to find your clients who actually pay for your service or product. Then we do project our revenues and our cost structure. Hopefully, revenues are extremely exponential and cost is super flat, and we have our profit. I do, on purpose, simplify and generalize here a lot. The point that I want to make is we often start with a problem then it takes five to ten years, we have an innovation, a technology, a patent, and very often then we start thinking about how to use it. Okay, that's what I call the traditional approach, and now I want to start my reflection on how the future could look like. Reflection number one is, if we are a researcher, if we work in a company on research and development, we put a lot of effort, a lot of dedication, a lot of energy, and very often a lot of money into working on a problem. And the first question is, are we working on the right problems? Um, who has never seen this? It helps me to understand the audience. Okay, those are the 17 global goals for sustainable development of the United Nations. Those are the 17 challenges that almost everyone signed up on. And if you trust famous people like Stephen Hawkins, well, then we probably have another 100 years on this planet if we continue like this. So the first question is, shouldn't we work on uh, contributing to achieving those goals when we talk about high-tech? First question, first reflection. If we do this, well, then we dedicate a lot of energy to the goal that is close to our heart, where we feel we can contribute as a researcher or somebody in a company. Um, and all this energy over five to ten years achieving this goal or helping to contribute to this goal goes into business development afterwards. Second reflection is, well, during this process, five to ten years, or when I develop my business model, what's the right decision-making function? And when I walk around, I hear a lot of talking about profit, about money, about the amount of money that I raised uh, in the next round but I hear much less about um, two other important dimensions which are called people and planet. So here the question is, can we have a decision-making function that has a variable that is called profit? It's extremely important to have 
uh, an economically sustainable business model. That's for sure. But how can we include a second dimension that is called people and a third dimension that is called planet whenever I make my decisions in the development process, but also when I develop my business model? Well, if we want to change decision-making functions, what we probably need is incentives. I guess we all know that people react to incentives. We don't always know in which direction they are going to react, but they react to, uh, to incentives. So my third reflection or thought is, um, how can we go from profit as the measure of success? I guess once our company grows, we all use international financial reporting standards. They say they have an objective measure, which is called profit, that we have in our profit and loss statement at the end. How can we go from this one to something that is kind of three-dimensional? How can we measure triple impact? Of course, we want to make profit, but then how can we also measure success based on the social value that we create and based on the ecological value that we create? If we find something that goes beyond, I publish a sustainability report because I'm a listed company, I think then we might have an incentive um, to kind of uh, have an effect on a decision-making function. Reflection number four is about a sustainability logic. Um, and I want to do this based on a formula. Very often, I believe that all of us, when we uh, think about business models, we create our revenues, or if you prefer the cash flow statement, call it positive cash. We have revenues or positive cash. We deduct our expenses, negative cash outflow, and then we have profit. I call this profit before sustainability. And then very often, and that's kind of the old model, and again, I simplify and I generalize, I deduct expenses for corporate social responsibility. I have a certain budget to spend on creating social or ecological value, and I get my profit after sustainability. And when you think about this for a little moment, is this probably also uh, kind of an older high-tech business model in terms of how I structure my personal biography. I work for 30, 40 years, I make a lot of money, and then I create a foundation to give something back. Well, perhaps it's time for a new sustainability logic that for every decision that we make, be it an economic decision, but also a decision um, for uh, your personal lives, isn't it time for a new sustainability logic and include sustainability in every decision making? And number five kind of wraps this up. Um, I realize that we live in times where a tweet, uh, a tweet on climate change sometimes is more powerful than 30 years of research. Well, this tells me storytelling, using new media is extremely important if you want to influence decision makers. Well, perhaps it's time for entrepreneurs who are money billionaires, because money making is definitely a happiness and spending money can be very uh, can make you very happy, but isn't it time for something that I would call impact billionaires? People who make money have this happiness, but then they make other people happy. They contribute to a better planet, which I would call a super happiness. Um, so if I wrap this up to conclude, I think at least what we observe is kind of an approach for business model development for high-tech that goes from uh, high-tech, somehow I have this fantastic innovation, to market. And I guess my reflection on my question is, isn't it time to go from high-tech to impact? This means I carefully choose the problem that I work on to develop a high-tech innovation, perhaps inspired by the 17 Global Goals for Sustainable Development, this means I have to be careful that, I, uh, that I'm able to use a decision-making function that has three dimensions, economic value, social value, ecological value. And then it will also help if we have a measure of success that allows me to show and to communicate that I'm actually creating more than just economic value. Those are the reflections that I wanted to share with you. That's something that we uh, think about at Technical University Berlin at the Center for Entrepreneurship. The 17th uh, global goal for sustainable development is about collaboration. 
So I want to end with an invitation. Um, if you want to contribute, if you want to give feedback, if you want to talk, please talk to us and help us. Thank you. Okay. Don't run away just yet. Uh, we have this awesome thing called Catchbox. Does anyone have any questions? No, come back, come back. Thanks, Florian. <laughs> I know, the stage, is a, the stage is a very scary place. Questions? Up the back. I'm going to go here in the front, and then we'll go up to the back. <laughs> Do you have any examples of German companies doing cool, uh, inspiring things in impact? I do have examples, but um, I propose that you come to me after the talk and then I give you the examples. I don't want to put one or two companies uh, in front of the camera. There All right, are examples. All right, this one's going up the back, so catch, with it, catch him later. Uh, ready? <laughs> Good catch. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so, yeah, I actually like the concept of moving from money billionaires to impact billionaires. But unfortunately, the way the world is right now, like, let's say if Bill Gates tells me he doesn't care about money, sure. If a homeless man on the street tells me he doesn't care about money, I'm going to end up listening to Bill Gates, sadly. So what do we do about it? How do we, like, transition? Um, I would never say we should not care about money. Um, I guess what I'm saying is we have a pretty one-dimensional decision-making function, and perhaps we should also care about the two other dimensions. Okay, and this is perhaps also about the question, uh, how much is enough? I agree. Cool. Anyone else for a question? No? Okay, cool. Uh, you'll be around the conference and, uh, yep, we can get some examples later. Maybe you can share them with the rest of us. Uh, cool. Thank you very much. And now we've got a break here on stage three.